experience over the last five or ten years. Well, I first came to this meeting nine years ago as a very junior researcher, and we had a childhood TV group, and there were five people. One had to be the secretary, two people had to be the chair, the rest were the audience. <laughs> now, when we have a pediatric group, we have 80 people, and the room is full, and more people want to come to workshops. Um, um, we've had international training workshops held in Cape Town in South Africa, um, which have been attended by um, this last year, there were 50 participants from 23 different countries. Um, tremendous in increased international awareness. There have been um, simplified um, guidance written by the union um, on how to manage child TV in high mm. burden settings, a desktop guide for clinicians. How serious um, is the problem in the field? Yeah. So I think the problem in the field is really dependent on the setting that you're in. Mm. In settings with high burden of TB, and especially those with high burden of HIV, we estimate that at least 15 to 20 percent of the total case burden is children. Um, in these countries, so 15 to 20 percent of all cases should be children if you actually look for them properly. In South Africa, we have about 17 percent of children, and that's actually once you start um, training people on how to find pediatric TB, you'll find that from the notification data from 2%, you'll have an increase after training up to 10 or 12%. And that's what people have been reporting in regions where national programs have been made aware and have started training on pediatric TB. So the case burden is much larger than people realize. It's not just the total number of children, but it's also the fact that children develop quite severe forms of disease. Um, and those include forms like TB meningitis and disseminated disease. And I think one other, we can talk about disease burden, we can talk about disease severity, but I think one huge public health imperative and tragedy really is that the vast majority of TB cases in children are preventable. Um, we know that in settings where if we were to do active contact tracing of children who have, are exposed to someone in the household with TB, that we can prevent those children from progressing to disease very effectively with eisenized preventive therapy for six months, which is safe and effective and cost effective. Um, contact tracing is not happening in most high burden setting countries. And in fact, every year, when we make a children diagnosed in our hospital, Tigerberg Children's Hospital, 60% of children diagnosed with culture positive TB had a contact. Almost none of them had had preventive therapy. So there are ways it's preventable. And there are guidelines on the fact that Adults should be asked how many children are there in your household, and contact tracing should happen. But healthcare systems actually are not currently implementing these guidelines due to many reasons, including that of limited capacity. Um, the other huge factor that we face with, especially in sub Saharan Africa, is that of TB and HIV in children, and HIV positive children being at much higher risk of developing TB than HIV negative children, and often having many episodes of TB over their lifetime and having a higher risk of, of interactions between the TB meds and the antiretroviral therapy. Um, and so in, in the setting where we work in Cape Town, about 25% of all of our children with TB are HIV positive. Now if you go to Johannesburg or Guzulu Natal, 60 or 70% in chil uh, of children in hospital with TB are actually HIV positive. Um, that proportion may very much differ depending on where you're working. So the burden of TB and HIV together in children is really a double whammy. One other key message I think that we've been noticing over the last years is that HIV positive women have a much higher risk of tuberculosis. Which means that Please, please go. go. Asthma is only to room 23. Please could Asthma is only go to room 23. Thank you. Since she was the previous president of the union, I suppose she'd better go. <laughs> yeah. So I think that there's an increase of um, HIV-related maternal tuberculosis that's been shown. That's also increased risk of the infants getting TB and actually of mothers and babies dying. So there are, there's a huge awareness of maternal and infant um, increased risk of tuberculosis in the context of HIV. Um, there's been a workshop here yesterday, actually a symposium, which is focused on the issue of integration of HIV, TB, maternal and infant care. Um, I'm thinking of how we can link the existing healthcare services to more effectively prevent tuberculosis in women and their babies and the families of those women. Obviously there may be other children at home. 
So the, the unit of a mother and a baby as a unit of effective intervention and in a way to get into a household is really important. And this, um, the three I's are intensified case, finding and patient control, IPT. The fourth I is integration. Mm -hmm. So we've actually just started a fourth I working group. We're not quite sure what we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. But just to highlight these issues around, yes, we know these strategies can work. This is what we should be doing. But there's so much need to integrate um, TB and HIV in children, but also looking at integrating health services like maternal health care services, EPI vaccination programs, IMCI. Because all these things are working relatively well in some settings, but together they could actually be more effective. So those are some of the emerging themes. Um, but there is definitely progress, um, and for the first time, there's also interest to fast track children into drug trials, even if it's limited efficacy or pharmacokinetics. And so we're at an exciting time. Um, the other huge area is, of course, that of TB vaccine development. And mm -hmm. infants there are the first population to be seen as highly effective to enroll because they have relatively high TB incidence rates. So we, we have tools like drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics, but we need um, health systems to be able to um, prevent and detect TB in children. 